We thought it would be fun to end with our experts on stage all together. And I'm gonna just ask you guys to say something quick and then we can open up for a couple of questions if that works for everybody. So Bob, why don't you start? Something, one thing maybe you forgot to say. <laughs> that I forgot to say. Uh, okay, back to sleep, fundamentals. Okay, if you're not getting a good night's sleep and you're screwing it up day after day, guess what happens? You end up being inverted. Okay, because your circadian rhythm completely inverts, right? Remember that 45 minute forward thing? Okay, at the end of, say, 10 days, you're eight hours out of sync. At two weeks, you're 12 hours out of sync, right? So all of a sudden, your circadian rhythm said you should be sleeping, but you're at work. So sleeping on the job, not a good idea. Thanks, so sleep. Yeah, stay with it. Kristen. So um, when I was outside and talking to people that were interested in the book, a lot of people were asking me, like, do you have a set of rules or what's the top 10? I don't see it in the, in the notebook. So I was um, mentioning that that was the first presentation I did two years ago. And I actually have a show on PBS coming out in December that goes over all of those things. So I just, I didn't mention it and I wanted yeah. to do the shameless no promotion of it and there it is. So <laughs> glad you did. And we'll also put that on our website too. Okay. So awesome. Okay, Chuck. Uh, one way we might end the day is to consider what you think you learned over the last eight or nine hours and give it away. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Dan. So, do I have time to tell like a four minute story? Let me look at the clock. Okay, if you do it fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I want to say, so I'm going to do a real, going to talk really fast. So, I just, because what I really want people to know is about how um, powerful yoga is. And we've learned, like, I learned a lot being here from, from everyone about nutrition, health, and, um, but yoga is one of those things that, like, it's available for everybody. So, like I said, I kind of finished my stories. I went to yoga teacher training, but I didn't want to be a yoga teacher. And I meant it, like I did, I just wanted to learn more. And then what happened was uh, they posted this picture of me on Facebook practicing yoga from that teacher training and all my military buddies were commenting on it like, oh, that's great. But then in real life, it was like, Dan, what's up with the yoga? <laughs> you know, it was all that. And, um, and I was just trying to get other warriors, other people like me to practice. And um, I kept getting resistance and resistance and resistance. And then finally, six months later, I was at a golf event and um, I ran into one of my buddies who's a warrior, um, fellow Wounded Warrior Project alumni who also used to work for the organization. He said, Dan, you look different, like lighter. Mm. Is that the yoga? And I said, yeah, it is. He said, wow, well, can you teach me? Or like, oh, yeah. so no, he goes, I want to learn more about it. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. So I'm like, after golf, let's come to my house for a beer. And he was like, okay, let's do it. And I was, so, like, I was driving home and I was thinking, I was like about the dad about to have the sex talk with my kids because I was just like, what am I going to say? Like, how do I bring it up? And he finally said, he was like, hey, so what's up with the yoga? So I brought all of these books because I wasn't going to teach him yoga. I didn't want to be a yoga teacher. And, and I was like going through everything, showing the book, The Four Agreements and Being of Power and all these other books that I read. And um, I looked up and then that's when I saw his face. Mm -hmm. And you know that look when something's wrong and like, you know it when you see it. And I just said, hey, is everything okay? And then he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, no, everything's not okay. Two days ago, my wife found me in my closet with a gun in my mouth. Oh. And I was a second away from pulling the trigger when she opened the door and my little girl was there. And he said, I just don't know what to do. And I, the only thing I could get out of my mouth was, you need some yoga in your life. <laughs> and then to my surprise, he said, like, well, teach me. And I wound up teaching my first yoga class to one dude in my living room. And it was so bad. I didn't pay attention in teacher training. And um, it was the worst. But then I said, let me set you up with a studio. So I bought him a yoga mat and paid for his first month of unlimited uh -huh. yoga. And I got feedback that he was going. And then finally, three weeks later, I got a call from him. He said, hey, man, just wanted to call to say thank you. Because um, you know, I've been going to this yoga thing, and I kind of like it. And I just wanted to tell you that my month's about to be over, and I'm going to renew for another month. And I wanted to say thank you. And I thought he was saying thank you for paying for it. You know how people do. And I said, like, don't worry. I got a great deal. No problem. And then he said, um, dude, I'm not thanking you for paying for my yoga. I'm thanking you for saving my life. Mm. And I didn't really get it, but thankfully he kept talking. And he said, because yesterday was a really bad day. And I went to go get my gun. 
but I grabbed my yoga mat instead. Oh. And uh, then I was like, shit, I gotta be a yoga teacher now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, then I signed up for my next teacher training and now 800 hours of teacher training in, that's all I wanna do oh. is teach yoga. So um, I'm so glad that I just got a chance to come and share that with you all. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Patrick, or Dr. Who. Uh, wonderful. Well, it's been really lovely for me to be here today. I want to tell you how inspired I've been by all of uh, my fellow speakers, but also by all of you for mm -hmm. being here, taking the time here. How wonderful is that to just try to proactively prevent illness by looking at your mental state, uh, doing some meditation, and, and, and looking at your diet. I mean, if everybody did that in the world, could you imagine what a mm. world this would be? would be amazing. And I spend a lot of my time now with um, having some healthy conversations with insurance companies saying, you know, they need the medicine. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Or they need the scan. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. And, and so we're just going back and forth about all of these medicines and scans, which are very important. Uh, but boy, you know, we do some meditation. We do uh, watch what we eat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get insurance approval for that. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's really probably the most powerful thing you can do. So I want to congratulate all of you for being here today. Thank you, Patrick. Well said. <laughs> we have time. We have time for maybe two questions. Does anybody have something burning they'd like to ask one of the panelists? I can't really change my work schedule, but I try to incorporate whatever else I can. I eat completely backwards, like I eat dinner at two o'clock. I have like, so I've changed everything I can change, but okay. I still work nights. Yeah, I, I hear you and understand. What, what, what profession are you in that you work nights? I'm a rehabilitation specialist for Helen Keller. I understand why you work nights. Um, I have very, very bad news for you. I know. Okay. Uh, the simple truth is a very large study was done about the Boston Police Force, and this has been replicated with third shift workers all over the world. Women incur a whopping 60% rate of breast cancer working night shift. Women cannot work night shift. It should be legally prohibited for women to work night shift. And in fact, if you haven't been scanned recently, I strongly suggest Excellent, and you're all clear, yeah, fantastic. I know that you probably love your work, okay, but the reality is that you are, you are pulling a, a, you literally have a gun to your forehead, you know, that has a better than one chance in two of killing you, okay? If at all humanly possible, find a way to get on a day shift, because night shift for women is a killer. Oh, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Therese, how about to Mar Mary? Mary Carney. Oh, after, after Patricia. <laughs> well, first, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. I came in from Tennessee last night, and a friend came here from Boston. And it's neat to see the scientific community along with everybody else. Uh, but I'm staying with a friend in McLean, and we were having wine last night, and there must have been how many bottles <laughs> of, <laughs> of vitamins and supplements? And oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> that's no fun. And, and, and these friends are very, very well educated people, and they're both cancer survivors. And I saw one bottle that said anti alcohol supplement, and I went, What is that? Is that like milk thistle? So I guess my question to you is, what is the belief with all of the supplements and, and the things out there, should we take, should we not take? Who do you go to to know what to take? Is there a simple answer to that? <laughs> That's a tough one because there's really very little evidence that any supplement helps in, in a randomized study, even multivitamins. You know, the, in a randomized multivitamin study, actually there is one actually, 
it, it turned out it, it, the, the guys died earlier if they took the multivitamin. And, <laughs> and I think they've solved that issue because it had iron in it, and, and, and you can't have too much iron uh, as, as a man because it, it starts to deposit in your heart. So, so now men's vitamins, I think they've solved it by taking the iron out of it. So there really is very little. Uh, that being said, you know, there are some things that, there's some soft signs, and there's things I take myself. You know, mm -hmm. I started taking selenium recently because, you know, uh, there's some signs with immunity and selenium. So I don't know, but knowing that the, the data there is not perfect. So you're just going to have to work in an area of gray when it comes to supplements and data. It's, it's not perfect out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This question is for you. Um, a lot of people, I'm in my 40s, and I see that cancer is rampant and going up. So how do they get immunotherapy? I mean, w with oncologists, not every oncologist offers that. And for a long time, it was in trials. Thank you. Yeah. So it's only FDA approved for certain kinds of cancers, like melanoma, lung cancer, bladder cancer, and certain kinds of colon cancer. So, so it's not approved for every uh, uh, kind of treatment. But otherwise, there's a lot of clinical trials out there. So clinicaltrials.gov is a great site to try to find trials. Uh, and so um, it's really. And I see my patients who are alive now, they're the ones who got into a cutting edge clinical trial because you think, oh, that's just an experiment. Well, the science is so good now that oftentimes the, your best bet is a cutting edge clinical trial because the standard of care is what was done five, 10 years ago. It's the clinical trial that's got all the new science in it. And, and so that's, um, that's why I recommend. So places like MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering, Dan Farber, have, uh, Johns Hopkins have a lot of clinical trials going on. And let me amplify uh, his statement. Um, that's just the United States. The world is a big place, and there are a lot of first world countries with absolutely cutting edge, excellent clinical trials, and they will accept you, okay? It's not an issue of nationality for a lot of these things. It's if you meet the eligibility criteria for the, for the clinical trial. Uh, Germany has a fantastic set of immunotherapy programs. Britain has a fantastic set of immunotherapy programs. Do not hesitate to trial. Do not, sorry, do not hesitate to travel for a trial because it can be life-saving. Thank you. Okay. One more? Okay. Okay. Are there any stem cell, uh, stem cell therapy clinical trials in this area? Stem cell studies for, I guess our stem cell person is gone, but stem cell <laughs> therapies for cancer or for other? No, not for cancer. No, for other treatments. Yeah, there are other uh, trials in stem cell biology right now. So Bob is gone, so I don't know uh, mm -hmm. where they are right now, but there are big stem cell programs. We're, we're starting one right now at MD Anderson, but Baylor College of Medicine I know has a big stem cell program um, as well as many great universities. Okay, and just one other question, Dr. Selvitz. You mentioned something about green tea, and I didn't catch the end of it. Can you repeat that? Yes. Uh, it turns out that tea in general has an amino acid in it called theanine, spelled T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E. -E. Okay? It essentially is why we all drink tea. And, the, and it's very powerful in terms of being uh, um, anti-caffeine. There's a lot of caffeine in tea, and the reason why it doesn't put us on the roof is the theanine. It turns out if you take theanine without the caffeine as a 200 milligram uh, little capsule, uh, it is almost as strong as Valium without any of the side effects. I mean, there's a drug for you, right? Um, and, and it beautifully can smooth out your day, and it's perfect if you take it two hours before bedtime to generally calm your system and get you ready for bed. Completely over the counter. It, it's typically in high concentrations in green tea. Alternatively, if you don't want the capsule, decaffeinated green tea is a fantastic way to get it. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you. Thanks so, so much. This has been amazing. Really amazing.